We are with Thierry Stern here in the Salon of uh, Geneva to talk about something that we know is pretty dear to you, this notion of fine craftsmanship and métier d'art. So tell us a bit more about it. Well, you know, uh, métier d'art for Patrick Philippe, uh, we are not talking about business. That's for sure. We are talking about passion. How can you talk about business when you only produce uh, like 50, 55, 57 different type of pieces like that? You know, it's not a lot of pieces. But when you talk about the dream, when you talk about passion, that's a lot of them. So for me, it's really something that I have learned when I was a kid, you know, growing up with my grandfather and my father, showing me those beautiful pieces. The first time I ever saw a watch, it was a pocket watch so and I still remember it very well I remember the color of the pocket watch I even remember the draw with this beautiful scenery on it and today it's still in the museum so for me uh, talking about métier d'art means talking about my own history my passion for dreaming because you are talking about just having a dream the difficult part is then to design the dream and to put it on the watch and this is what I like really it's that you're gonna create something who will last after you who will maybe spend most of the life I don't know on a wrist or maybe on a desk and finally in a museum and this is something I think beautiful because I will be gone since many years but still those pieces will remain so that's really what uh, I like about it. And you had organized like a few years ago also an event a bit like this one showcasing these time pieces and the crust and the people that are behind them of course. Uh, how important for you is it to do the to organize these kind of uh, uh, events? Well uh, there's two things the first thing I think is to to be able to show it to most of the people because I have a lot of comments uh, coming from uh, email or on internet that people always tell me the same, they say we are not able to see them. Once they, they are, have been produced, you show them once at Basel, I cannot come in Basel, but after that they are gone. And they are right, I mean we, we present them only once at Basel, the reader will come, they will take their order, then I will have to select them because you know I have uh, for example 50 pieces this year for maybe thousand and thousand of uh, orders. So I have to choose who's going to receive them. And the problem is that those people, they will never see them, they say well I know you create them but they are gone. So the idea was to say okay you may not be able to order one of them but let me at least show it to you. I think that's very important you know because people are enjoying that. It's exactly like the museum you know. Yeah. They like to come to enjoy to talk about it so that's something I think it's important to do the second thing is also that you have always to I would say to say hey this is real rare handcraft most of the brands those last year have been doing a lot of rare handcraft believe me not all of them were very nice some of them were very good some others very bad so I think it's also very important to explain to the people what are you comparing? You know, it's exactly like a car. Okay, you have a Ferrari who is very expensive, then you have maybe a, I don't know, a, a Renault who is a cheaper. Both of them work, but what is the difference? That's what you have to explain to people because they they can get confused, and I can understand that. You know, uh, they are not part of the the creation team. They they are not expert. So it's also our our duty to say, well, come, let me show you those pieces, and let let me explain you why those ones are better than the other one and how can you do that, you know? And most important, I think, for, for those people, they should also talk to the artisan, the people who are making them, mm -hmm. you know? Because I can talk as a commercial person, mm -hmm. they don't need to believe me and mm -hmm. I can understand that. But once they can talk to the guy who's making them or to the girl who's uh, working on that, or on engraving, enameling, uh, marquetry, guilloche, once they see it, then they will understand a little bit more. And that's, I think, what is important for me. So it's really to show, to explain, so at least they, they, they will go away from Patek Philippe, you know, and say, I had a good day, and now I know something uh, that I didn't realize before. Mm -hmm. And it's true, I mean, you could totally see, I mean, immediately that those uh, craftsmen, I mean, they're really happy to share uh, and talk and discuss uh, with people, explaining what they're doing. Uh, because, I mean, tonight we're a little bit among ourselves, meaning between journalists, but as you mentioned, I mean, this is, this is going to be a public uh, exhibition for a few days here open in Geneva uh, I mean it's complicated to move those uh, pieces around like you were mentioning uh, but I mean this is a strong will of yours to make it as open as possible right no totally you you need really to be able to say I will take the risk to show them you know now the risk is limited in Geneva that's for sure uh, but for example I would not be agreed to to travel those pieces in ten different places around the world mm -hmm. there are 
not too fragile, but uh, they're too beautiful to do that, you know, mm -hmm. and uh, it's hard. Uh, listen, it's, I always say the same, if I could keep all of them in a museum, I would do it. So uh, I'm definitely a very bad commercial person, as I know, but uh, we are not talking about business at this level. There are pressures, there are our babies, and sometimes it's not easy to release them. So imagine now I cannot say, oh, let's go for a tour, worldwide tour for uh, 10 months and mm -hmm. I will not see them. No, I am not going to take the risk, that's for sure. And I mean, as we know, I mean, I mean, Patek Philippe, you're manufacturing quite a lot of timepieces per year, tens of thousands, and this is, you're only talking about 50 timepieces, yeah. but I mean, this really represents, I mean, kind of your core identity. Well, it's our own core identity, but it's also the skill and the history of Geneva who is uh, part of it. And that's what is very important yeah. also. We should not forget that in the past, here in the Rue du Rhône, there were plenty of artisans, plenty of them. Each of them were making one, one part of the piece. That means you didn't have a watchmaker making everything. You know, they used to give it to the enameler, then to the engraver, then to the diamond setter. And what is beautiful when you are creating such a piece is that, imagine the first one who is making it, okay, if he's doing a mistake, that's fine, he can restart it. Now imagine the last one, if he's doing a mistake, he's going to destroy the whole work from all the other one. So it's a very, very complicated work, you know, a lot of tension, because if you are mi missing something, if you are scratching one of the parts, maybe you're going to have to restart two years of work. Yeah. And you have to explain that to the other one. And that's <laughs> not easy, but it does happen and you have to respect it. Sometimes, you know, yeah, accident will happen. Yeah, and I have seen that quite a few times. And it's not easy because you have a lot of young people who are so happy to present their work and suddenly they crack or they, something happens. And I'm always trying to explain them that this is normal. Don't get disappointed, you know, don't stop your, your art. Uh, this is part of uh, practice. I think all our life, this is what we are learning at school, at our work. It is exactly the same for those artisans. They also have sometimes to work the hard way. Well, thank you very much for pulling this exhibition together. I had a great time. I hope you, I hope you too. Thank you.